Hello everyone and today we are in the little secret garden once again. So this is a north side part of the home but we get complete full sun all day right here on this section. So what I have here that I didn't actually show you at all in this little area by the little um, tub is that not so long ago I went ahead and planted a little lime hydrangea. That's a panicle hydrangea and I'm going to say I went ahead and did that mid-spring. I think I went ahead and put that one in there. It was already getting hot and I'm so sorry I didn't get to show you transplanting it in there. It's one that we brought um, from our move when we were living in North Carolina but I went ahead and put it in there and it's doing amazing. I wanted to hurry up. The reason I rushed to planting and didn't get to do it on video is because it is starting to get warm and it's not a great time to start when it gets hot to plant those kind of um, especially hydrangeas. Um, in the ground right now because they can feel it but gave it its biotone and it's doing amazing so as you can see there is a clematis going up there and that clematis is um, jolly good um, that's a clematis from proven winners and it was planted there by her daughter alexis um, last spring and it's doing amazing so right now as you can see our rose right there climbing rose is not blooming but that is the reason why you want to have a clematis when you have climbing roses so you can have that extra you know um, color uh, blooming color so let's go ahead and show you what i have planned to plant in here now the crazy thing is that i really didn't even have this area planned out um, i just knew that i wanted to go ahead and throw some good color in here and just have fun with it so most of the plants have been sitting around here for a while um, and putting some growth already and I love to use co um, coleus because it just goes in every area meaning um, sun or shade and this right here is chocolate drop color blaze coleus and how beautiful is this so this one has more of a trailing mounding habit and I'm going to go ahead and put it in this area right here and then you got I got right here some purple which this is meteor shower verbena now, yeah, like I've told you, it's been here for a while and it's been growing and how beautiful is that? The little poofy blooms, that's what I like to call them. The, the pollinators have gone, gone crazy with this right here. And then of course I have to add a potato vine. And this one right here is Sweet Carolina Raven. Excuse the pots, it's been raining and I've had them here so they have a bit of the mud in there. But how beautiful is this potato vine? Um, yeah, it's... Did I say Sweet Caroline Raven? So look at that color right there. Isn't that so pretty, a bit of a purple with black? And then we have on this side, which I was wondering what pop of pink I was gonna put. This is a, and Ambrose is gonna have to help me on this one right here. Double up, Double up pink begonia. And I already have one planted right by our back door and it's just grown amazing and it's so pretty. I had one left and I just had to go ahead and tuck it back here. So when the rose is in bloom, this can go right with it. And then we have another coleus, of course a favorite. And this is Golden Dreams coleus. And I decided to put it on this other area because there's really not much going on. So let's go ahead and get plenty. So I'm going ahead and working the soil, moving it around and preparing it to put some of the biotone in here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put some in there. Kind of eyeball it already. Mix it all in for those annuals. The verbena here, the meteor shower verbena actually is a perennial in our area, zone 7B here in Virginia. So that can stay here till next year. And there you go. So now what's gonna be the first one to be planted? I'm going with the meteor shower verbena and I will go ahead after the planting and cut it, cut the verbena down a little bit just so it can bush out. See, they've been there for a while. So I have to tickle the roots, but I wanted y'all to go ahead and see the, the color on it, the blooms. Okay, so there's the verbena. And now we have the coleus, which this um, coleus 
chocolate drop. There's also, um, I think it's called strawberry drop, um, which we've also used and love so much. It spreads around. That's a good thing about it. So it might not look so big, like it's gonna do much, but boy, can it grow. Come on. So it's been raining quite a bit around here and that's why we've been holding up, holding on, I'm getting some things planted, plus all the other um, plantings we've been having to do around here. And these are some of our last ones that we're doing. I think I'll go with the begonia. Has beautiful double blooms. And we got ourselves a potato vine. Now the potato vine as well, like the, the, um, Chocolate drop coleus will trail down and fill and I'll go ahead and play around with it while it's growing, spreading it around to the other side. It'll actually spread on its own. Sometimes you don't even really have to mess with them. They do their own thing. And then of course the Golden Dreams Coleus, one of our favorite coleus, tough, tough coleus. We grew it last year um, up in our front garden, full sun. Got huge, like a huge, huge bush. We planted two. I do have to tickle the roots on this, on these guys. They've been there for a while, since early spring. And this is not a very huge area, but, and you know how I'm explaining, the plants are going to put on a lot of growth, some of them, but these I'll be coming back here and giving them a trim throughout the season. And there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a trim and then I'll be back. So I thought I had to do a, a trim on this one right now because I, I thought I broke a piece off, but I did. And I'll go ahead and wait and trim it a little bit. I'm not sure if I need to though. I wanted to go ahead and trim it just so I can bush up a little bit. But like I was saying, I wanted y'all to see the color on, on those blooms on the on the meter shower verbena. But I, I love how the pink of the double up begonia is showing because with time, if the rose is not blooming all the time in pink, I'll have the little lime blooms start changing towards the end of the season into that beautiful rosy pink. I call it kind of an antiquish color and it will start, I don't know, it will go back. I think it'll go back really nicely with the begonia blooms. So it just look very pretty. And begonia, this, the begonia will always be blooming through the whole season through the first frost. So that's something amazing. Um, and then you have the meter shower. It will also be blooming through the whole time. So we have, you know, all these things here playing along together. So. I'm really happy with it. I think it's a very happy little area full of color. It's, I think it's one of the areas that most of the times we get, um, what's the word? I'm very discouraged to work around with because it's a very dark area. It's one of the, our most dark, uh, sometimes dark areas during the, it rains a lot here. So it does get dark around this area. During the day when we do have those hot days, we get the full sun here and it looks really pretty, but it gets forgotten around here a lot because it's a lot of also mud around here. But I think this right here makes it look so pretty and inviting and it makes you want to come this way no matter what and, and enjoy it. So there's that little simple planting guys and we are going ahead and getting ready to do a tour soon and that's why we're getting, you know, doing, fixing up all these plantings, uh, the last ones, as it's starting to get hot around here and we don't want any of the plants to start looking a little bad or, or go bad on us on the containers. So I hope you enjoy this very much. Any questions you have on the plants, go ahead and leave them down below and that's it. I will go ahead and see you later. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.